start with love and end with love. All the stuff that's in the middle is negotiable with love. You don't have an option when you start and you end with love. No matter how much somebody pisses you off, love them through it. Even if that means loving them from a distance because some people are truly detrimental to your health. Still loving them enough to understand that where the greatest good happens for the greatest amount of people is love. My biggest goal in life is for my daughter to fully understand me. That means the good and the bad. I don't want to hide anything. Be able to sit down and say that was a good guy. He had some issues. He worked through those issues. Hey y'all, welcome to the ninth episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing so far. Starting to get the hang of this. Have a really incredible discussion today with Chris Lewis Duncan. Hope you guys enjoy. Alrighty guys, welcome to the eighth episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. David Owen Brown here with my buddy Chris Lewis Duncan. Hey, what's up, man? Chris, why don't you tell the listeners who you are? Yeah, I'm Chris Duncan, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, moved to Atlanta almost 10 years ago. That's crazy. Um, I moved to Atlanta um, to pursue a marketing life. I literally was transferred from a job in um, Birmingham, Alabama, and I just had to get out of Birmingham. Um, great city, just not for me. Um, I came over to really chase the dream, and that was during the days that you had to convince people why they needed Facebook, why they needed Twitter. So me and my business partner back then went door to door, or business to business, and told people why they needed Facebook and Twitter, and we built out the organic social campaigns when the organic social was like really a big deal. So, what years was that? Oh, uh, this was 2010. Uh, yeah, 2010, 2011. Yeah. So what makes you an expert in your industry? Uh, I think <laughs> I think um, just a year spent. Um, I don't know if anyone is an expert in anything, um, but I think my year spent, the things that I know to look for, the ways I know how to execute, um, and even the people to put around it to actually execute. Hell yeah. Mm. I would consider you an expert. I appreciate that, man. I feel like you have to let other people call you an expert. You can't just walk around and say, like, I'm a guru. I'm an expert. Like, other people facts, can give you that. Facts. But when I go straight to it, like, Chris, what have you got? <laughs> because, what, we meet in 2010? Yeah, maybe 11. 11? Yeah. Through, early. Early, though. Through Michael and Susan Shore. Yeah, great. Creative game. Word and Image, CWI. Mm -hmm. How's CWI doing? Uh, I, crazy enough, me and Michael were emailing today. Really? Crazy enough. Um, they're doing good. I talked to Susan not too long ago about, um, I was asking her how much I charge for her, some talent, um, and she was helping me out on that. So they seem good. You know, they helped, they helped launch my career in a sense that I saw what was possible. And I guess you could say they gave me hope. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because I didn't even know it was possible to build out and sustain um, I agency model um, before then, so yeah. I love that. I agree. I think I feel like they did that for me in some ways, for that's sure. Cool. Not only just being second parents growing up in right. middle and high school. Oh, that's major. But after college, working for them mm -hmm. and being in the social media marketing industry, which is where I am still today. That's so major. And learning so many facets of it, flying out to Pontiac, Michigan, oh, San Jose, California, yeah. Bear, Delaware, <laughs> all, I mean, these little places opening these retro fitness gyms and figuring out how to kind of penetrate this market. Still, when the internet was up and coming, I mean, it wasn't where it is today. By Definitely any means. wasn't where it was, and that was a franchise model um, based marketing that we didn't even know what we were doing back then. We just did it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> It's crazy to even think back that far and just how green we both were then. So green, bro. Yeah. How funny is it that Gary Vaynerchuk and VaynerMedia oh now my goodness. operates how, the account? Oh my goodness. It's so crazy. For Retro Fitness because through Eric Castleberry? I remember back in the day when you literally were asking, not you personally, but everyone was like, who in the hell is a Gary V? And but, now to see who he has become, Regardless if you like or dislike his philosophies, like you have to admit that this man has done a lot. Vander Media is out of here, like crazy. Next level, yeah, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Just because he's faceted on so many different levels, right? He's the Tony Robbins of industry, bro. Like people, yeah, they underestimate Tony and Gary. Tony, 
<laughs> and just so true, they influence the most influential and, and wealthy people yeah. in the world. Absolutely. So for Tony Robbins, instance, he's got the info Absolutely. on trading and what to do and where to do it on so many levels. That's why I always try to go back and get a little influence from their podcasts or YouTubes, That's which good. is kind of where I am in 2019 with my content intake. I do not watch any TV mainstream media. Okay. Um, I use the utilize the Economist. Okay. Uh, my friend shares her subscription with me. Oh, very cool. And so that's nice because it's like not cheap, and <laughs> that's my favorite place for real news. Um, okay. Everything else I kind of get through my Instagram story, Facebook, absolutely. My friends and network, um, along with a few other Atlanta news sources yeah i'm almost the same i um i'm big on new york times which i know is super left-leaning um but i'm big on the new york times i just get updates and i have been for years so i guess if i see something then i go to another source to like check it out essentially um i get um tons of news from friends and family trusted sources like Hey, How about the Patriot a, Act with the Salman I like it. I do like it. He goes deep. It's um, but also it's just an interesting show. Like I just like hearing this man talk. Um, What's your favorite episode? Probably the one on Supreme and Streetwear because it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah, I put Supreme and Gary V in the same box. I respect, just not a fan. If that's the best way to put it. Um, I heard. Yeah, I respect what they have done. I respect the grind for sure. Just not a fan of the um, the production and what they actually produced. So with Gary Vee, you mean his his, yeah, his talks, um, his his rants. I feel like it's a very one sided POV, um, which is fine. You know, it's things that I don't feel like resonate with people that have had the life experiences that I have had. But it's motivational, and yeah, he can use that and go for it. I know one thing, Gary Vee would not care one one iota what Chris Duncan thinks, so. But for my two and cents. That's his grind, but so one of the reasons we're talking about this like this is because we hosted D Rock, mm. David Rock, in 2011. That's crazy. Uh, he stayed with me when he was still doing Craigslist jobs, and I wow. met Susan and Michael through that. Did you meet him during yeah, that time I filming did. Mm -hmm. at the Millennium Gate yeah. Museum and National Monuments Foundation? Yeah, we had a meeting, and all of us were brought together. So yeah, but yeah, because we were working over at what was that studio? Off oh of yeah, I know Freedom all, Parkway. All the way over there off the Cal. Ralph McGill. Ralph yeah. McGill. Yeah, and so um, I can't think of the name of the studio, but yes. Cause I had to transcribe some by some French scripts right. to English, right. and I don't speak French. Had to use it. I had to do some stuff like that too for Susan, some yeah. Michelin stuff. Um, but yeah, so it was cool getting to know D Rock then, showing him Atlanta from a local's view, which has kind of been my thing. Let's stay ATL. Yeah, very the cool. reason I have the capacity and audacity to <laughs> maintain the moniker of Mister Atlanta. Yeah because I've hosted over 10,000 groups between one wow. and eight people via couch surfing, Airbnb, and stayatl.com over the past 12 years. Absolutely. So after like the 50th person was like, you know what, David, you kind of have the keys to the city. You're mm. Mr. Atlanta. I said, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll, I'll own it. it. Ain't it's nobody else doing it. Yeah, it's something that somebody has to give you. They gave it to you. You received it. You put on your jacket, the proverbial jacket, and now you are Mr. Atlanta. Now I am, and I also have this mental accountability check that I consistently need to do things for the city, the betterment of it, and how to really raise awareness with yeah. my platforms on things that matter, not just Absolutely. bullshit yeah. of partying and, yeah, and where to go and who to see and this and that. It's like, how can you help and make a real difference with other people to make the biggest difference with yourself? Absolutely. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not mad at that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's something you're looking forward to? In life right now? Um, or for the city? I actually, come back to that. Okay. What's something that you wish you could have told yourself 10 years ago? Oof, 10 years ago, I would have told myself to enjoy the journey. Don't look just at the destination because you'll get there and then you'll look around and say, all right, I made it, now what? Enjoy the journey literally every single day detach 
put on paper what was good about today, journal uh, what was good to, about today, what could have been better about today, what just absolutely sucked about today, and just continue to enjoy instead of just striving in one direction. Mm. Yeah. What's your routine? Daily. Um, get up uh, around six. I have an eight-year-old daughter, so now um, take her to school every day. Well, not every day. Every other day, take her to school, but. Typical day, get up at six, um, read I um, read my devotion because I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, so I read it a uh, biblical-based devotion, spend some time in prayer and meditation, um, try to read a book, it just depends on the day, I may watch um, a, a lesson or two on YouTube, this puts me around seven o'clock. Um, I have a very independent daughter, so it's really cool. She's already dressed by seven o'clock. She wakes herself up, she sets her own alarm, and she's already dressed. All I have to do is her hair. But in this process, I'm changing into workout clothes, drop her off at school at 7.30, I hit the gym from the gym, um, focus on some type of isolation for the day. Still trying to find out my routine because I've only been back at it for about six months, five months. So I'm still trying to find out what works for me because this is the first time in my life I have actually like went after um, consistent weightlifting and building muscle, but also just an overall healthy lifestyle. And um, yeah. What are your fitness goals? Ah oh, man, just to look good with my shirt off. Mm -hmm. um, I wish it was more than that, but I mean, I do have technical real goals. Um, I do want to do a bike. Mine, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. The base of it, is to feel beautiful absolutely naked. absolutely that but really even deeper than that is to live as long as i can absolutely. with the best potential energy and vibration level Man. so that's why i've cut out chemicals processed food and meat mm -hmm. in my diet yeah my daily routine and nutrition and that's just a whole nother yeah, we we didn't even chat about this, man. I've been vegan for two years. And so when you were talking earlier, I was like, I'm going to put a pin in this and say this for the podcast. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, I'm not raw vegan. Um, I am striving towards that direction. I'm just really big about health. Like, we have to make sure we're healthy. We have one body. And it really sucks that, especially in the black community, that it's preventable diseases hypertension, diabetes. These are things that we can literally just eat better. We don't even, like the crazy thing is, you don't even have to exercise. Like you just eat better. And even some for some people, exercise is such a four letter word, but you know, like I do, like even the most fit people don't want to get up and exercise, but then when it becomes part of your habit, it just is part of your life. Just like, I don't want to sit in Atlanta traffic, but when I have to leave my house, it's just driving. So like, that's how I look at it. Like this morning, I literally am doing deadlifts yawning because I'm just tired. And it's just like, well, what else you gonna do? I'm here now, let's get this weight up, you know? And so that's just for me, um, part of the lifestyle. I think when you start, when you stop making things options and you just make it part of your routine, it just gets a lot easier. Cause yes, I could literally say, I don't wanna go to the gym today and choose not to go to the gym. Nothing is making me go to the gym, but also nothing is saying that I don't, um, I just need to stay home either. I have an option on both of those sides and I choose to be my healthiest self. But also not going overboard, you know, like I was squatting <laughs> 200 one day and I was throwing that, or two, what was it, 205, and I started to add more weight and I was like, why? Like, I'm not, I'm not moving anyone off an of offensive line. I'm not doing like, what is my true, and that's bringing it back, what is my true fitness goal here? Mm -hmm. Like, I do want to be happy, I want to be healthy, but also I don't want to do it for anyone else except for myself. So if I'm going after that and doing it for someone else, then they hold my affirmation, my or actually they hold validation for myself in their hands. And nobody deserves that key, no one. Validation only can come through me, for me. And for each individual is only, we can only be validated by ourselves or a higher being if we choose to believe so. But yeah, when we say like we need our girlfriends or boyfriends or, or a trainer or a trainer, exactly. Or some random person in the gym to give us our validation. That's ridiculous. And they are our crux, our enableization Absolutely. of having the capacity 
the desire or the vision to go to the gym mm -hmm. or outside or wherever you get yeah. your fitness to get it. And that has been one of the biggest things for me being then back in the fitness industry, seeing people's excuses of not training. Yeah. And oh, codependency, just because I can relate from it oh, in so, so many real. ways. It's so real. Um, is the one I just really have a hard time uh, hearing. Yeah. And so this is what I tell most people because they'll say, like, Chris, I don't want to be a vegan. Never asked, I have never asked anyone to be a vegan. Literally made the decision on my own, and so I never put that on anybody else. Why? And so, um, just Why'd because you be vegan? for me, being a vegan was to test my limits, man. To not, excuse me, not even to test my limits, but not live within my limits that I had already set for myself. So, I stopped eating beef and pork when I was 13 years old. I cut out, um, chicken about four years ago three years ago um and fish or i guess you could say um seafood followed shortly after because what i realized is that dairy is a killer and so once i cut out dairy and i started feeling so much better i couldn't eat my fish i mean i could have i could have used olive oil and i could have used alternatives mm -hmm. for this type of stuff but <clears throat> i love crab legs and i wanted real butter so once butter was gone yeah, I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and just nip all this in the bud. And so, yeah, for me, dairy was the biggest one. Um, cutting out that milk, that butter, that cheese, which is such an addict. And I mean, like, it's an scientific, it's yeah, truly scientifically it's, proven that it's an addiction. <laughs> it was engineered scientifically. That's so crazy. To be an addiction yeah. and be promoted by television, commercials, yeah. radio, media about... Hey man, get your cheese, dude. <laughs> oh, hey, it's even got protein. The uh, most important thing in the world. Which is it's even got a, fat, which is also good, but has a bad a, rap. But it ain't got no fiber. Cheese is fiberless. <laughs> and without fiber in your food, what are you really eating? Yeah. And which is such a hoax, too, that, I mean, the, you know, mass meat, and not to even get on this whole box, but you know that tells you that you can own like the number one question i get how do you get your protein vegetables have more protein than meat do yes they like do. it's 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 not it's not even or meat does excuse me it's not even like like these are just scientific facts like this is not i'm standing on the soapbox and making up like vegan propaganda literally look at how much protein is in an ounce of chicken versus I mean, you don't even have to get deep stuff. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. You know what I mean? Like these, these simple spinach, kale. <laughs> that all is protein. Absolutely, it's a smaller amount, but it's pure protein Absolutely. that our body can actively understand with these living enzymes. Absolutely. And just like getting to this point, the reason that I'm so passionate about it, and I'm sure you are too, just probably not as vocal as I am. I'm trying mm -hmm. to tone it back to where you are. Hopefully, I am there yeah. in two years. But I want other people to feel this way. Yeah, it's a light, it's definitely a lightness. And so I know just even with your journey, like what I know for, golly, what year is this, 2019? I stopped drinking in 2010. And so, or excuse me, no, 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 2013. So it's been uh, close to seven years, that's crazy. Um, and for me, it was just, I just wanted control. I just wanted control, I didn't want any substance to tell me it's time to relax it's time to have fun i didn't want anything to be able to control me in that way so i've just again it's just all about holistic health and even if you hear that timeline i'm not saying back to back to back i'm a cold turkey type of guy and i saw your post like i'm, I'm an extreme guy so like there's no like oh let's put one toe in let's do it like and that's just how i always been like First time I smoked weed ever in my life was 24 years old, and that was a gram. That one in one blunt, I smoked a gram by my because for me it was like if you're gonna do it, do it all at one time. And so, and that same and that could be positive because you are fully devoted, but also that could be very negative when things are killing you. So when it comes down to alcohol, it's no, it's it's not a, oh okay I'm tipsy. This is where I tap out. No, it's all right, what happened last night type of drinking. And so for all of that, and so this is not, uh, oh, drinking is bad. I mean, technically, I guess you are dehydrating your body, but I'm not here to say drinking is bad. I'm saying that um, for me, 
is definitely bad. And it it allowed me to make decisions that I wasn't okay with making sober. Mm -hmm. And so then I had to start asking myself, why am I drinking in order to do this decision and make these decisions? And for that, I was just like, this isn't, yeah, this isn't, why am I doing this to myself? So yeah. Wow. I love it. Hey man, try. <laughs> That's what I tell people, just try. Just, I'm telling you, like don't look at years down the line, one day, one meal. You know, one decision. Right, really just eat like we did, a bunch of hummus, black beans, yeah. guacamole. It's such a, it's such a and plethora. And see how you feel. Yeah, it's such a plethora of food. I think too, here in America, we are so taught to be full. And like, even if you're eating meat and you're eating, you know, dairy and everything, um, like the best nutritionist, no matter what diet they have you on, will tell you not to eat till you're full. Like that's not a good thing for us to do. Like our body is not meant to be in such a state of, yeah, that, that level of fullness where you feel like you can't move. That's not how you're supposed to feel after you get done eating. And to understand that you can eat quality food for your body, you can get everything you need for your body. Because one thing that I always hear is, if you're not getting protein from meat, then how are you building muscle? One of my, my, one of my close guys, he goes to my church, the guy is 6'2", Hit in 215, all muscle. He probably has about 3% body fat. Vegan, five years. Adrian Foster, National Football League, running back, vegan. You know, so. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Really? 30 years. He's been a vegan for 30 years? Oh, geez. Like, yeah. He is fucked. He's even been paid to do sponsorships for other things. Wow. Yeah. Early, earlier on, yeah, you know, with McDonald's and stuff. That's but crazy. yeah, there's a movie about to come out with That's him crazy. about it and it's gonna we're really close to shaking the world with these fast food chains adapting to oh, plant-based burgers these beyond burgers you know i don't need a plant a fake meat alternative mm. i just don't have desire or craving for that i crave cheese still some, sometimes yeah. still but at least the awareness is coming absolutely and we will hopefully have this epidemic of a third of America having diabetes, 40% yes, being obese, overweight, and 52% being on prescription drugs to get to a little bit more holistic based and these life. Are and, and here's here's a little radical thing I'll say is some maybe it might, it won't happen without some of the older mm. generations dying off. Yeah. Because I can tell you that some of my older family members just don't want to hear it. Yeah. And will thing. never even Ignore, oh, knowledge for not accept it. Oh, yeah, they don't want to hear it. So. My grandmother's thing is always I'm 82 years old, I've been eating meat my entire life. If it's time for me to go, it's time for me to go. I had a, a good run at it, but also my grandmother grew up on the farm mm -hmm. eating organic food before it was even a buzzword. They grew everything, even their meat. They grew, they knew what their animals were eating. It's not the same anymore, man. These, this. This stuff is pumped, and I'm not even saying that all vegetables are created equal. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, like, even with organic, it's not saying no pesticides. Is it GMO? You're right. Does your watermelon have seeds inside? Or is your cauliflower orange and purple? Like, why are we eating this stuff, man? Like, Well, cauliflower and broccoli are kind of fake. Right, from the, right? From the jump, right. <laughs> yeah. Which is even crazy within itself. Right. It's like, man. Yeah, so as a as a population. I'll also say that some meat Oh, absolutely is is fine to eat. Yeah. If it's I would even grass argue, fed. Yeah, I would even argue that God at least some of this is for real quality meat is better than the substitute meat that's out there. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, it's pumped full of and I mean even that in my journey is something like, okay. These are steps that, like, why am I eating this? Look, because I want mm. something fast and quick, you know, and it's easy to go to Publix in the freezer section. Like, no, let's be intentional about what I'm putting into my body. Even because I have this title of being a vegan, you can be very unhealthy, you know? Facts. Oreos are vegan. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm not eating an Oreo. I just know that if I do eat meat again, which I have a few times in these past mm. 10 months, yeah, I know that I'm going to be shitting 
like twice as much, but it won't be the next morning as much, which is what it is for me now. Yeah. As soon as I wake up every day, oh, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Yeah. Because everything is quickly digestible. Me, on the other hand, I'll stay with you. Two, three, four days of different shits, mm -hmm. different yeah. defecations, and different overall digestive feelings, which aren't good. They don't feel no. better than eating plants. So I just. No to expect that maybe I'll get a little more protein pump. Yeah. Um just it tastes good. Yeah. Do hell yeah. Just stay healthy. That's all I tell people is if you wanna put whatever you want in your body as long as it's healthy. Absolutely. Um yeah, because like I could eat a ton of candy and potatoes right now, but it's just not healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely out this sugar. Oh no, my goodness. That's a whole nother thing too. Yeah, sugar is the devil. Oh my goodness. For sure. Literally been proven to be more addictive than Coke. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so crazy. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Salt is the savior. Pink Himalayan sea salt. Yeah. Yeah. It's so healthy for us, man. Like, there's so many things that's just better for us with small amounts of research. It doesn't even, even yeah. if you want to like, oh, let me see the pros and cons. It's so easy. We, we have Google at our fingertips. Yes, we Google, do. you have people that are literally go, setting out to disprove things. They're like, oh, okay, well, it is really good for you. So look at pros and cons, look at um, arguments and counter arguments, and then make your decision. Talk to somebody, talk to a vegan. Mm -hmm. That's my <laughs> new campaign, talk to a vegan. Talk to a vegan. Yeah. Let's get a little hashtag right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I like that. So um, let's talk about some of your side hustles. Yeah, man. Um, my, my main side hustle, which is my main hustle, is Threshold. Uh, Threshold with no vowels, T-H-R-S-H-L-D. Uh, it is a creative marketing studio. Um, it's a fancy way of saying that creative branding and marketing. Um, we create the strategy, we create the concepts, and we execute pretty much. I have been doing contractors, we're term four in February. I've been doing contractors up to this point, but now I'm bringing on the team. I know I was chatting with you beforehand, but bringing on a full team is time because I'm really big about creating a tribe and I have a tribe for when I want to um, have fun. I have a tribe for when I want to do X, Y, Z, but now have feeling the onus on me to create a place for that tribe to work because people need this affirmation and vocation as well. And so, yeah, that's why I've really been charged up. Screw, like I can continue to make money the way I make money and be fine, but these people still don't have a place to work, you know? and once you start realizing that your life is more than just about yourself, more than just your family, but how are you creating greater good for the population? And I can hear people being like, that's kind of socialist, and then fine, whatever. You know what I mean? I just, I just feel like at any level you should be caring and loving for your neighbors that may not have the same opportunities or the same privilege as you. Why not? So. Reach one, teach one, make the world a better place, hold hands with a stranger. Shout out to Brene Brown. I love Brene Brown, bro. Oh my goodness, that's my white auntie right there. Oh. oh. she She's good. One T. Oh, <laughs> my one T. I, I literally can't wait to meet her. I know one of these days I am, and she's probably just gonna be like, oh, thank you. No, um, but yeah. Shame. <laughs> right, shame, yo, dealing with shame. She helped out so much in my life of uh, just tackling the core issues instead of, yeah, just this surface stuff, man. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of people deal with the fruit on the tree, but they're not actually dealing with the root of that tree. You gotta uproot it. You can't kill a tree by just pick, picking fruit off of it. Wow. Yeah. I love that. So I think she's gonna be the next person I dive into. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse Itzler is gonna be we were talking yeah. a little before yeah, yeah, yeah um let me know how that goes 100 miles he ran 100 miles 100 miles jeez yeah and sarah blakely's just recording and encouraging and he's non-stop and it's funny because there's synchronicities with where i am now i've mm -hmm. become a runner again yeah, yeah yeah running five to 15 miles for 120 days straight wow zero days missed that's Apple major. Watch. Apple Watch, man. Apple Watch. The accountability of this thing is unprecedented. It's Not crazy. only do I get my steps, I get my sleep, yeah. REM cycle, circadian rhythms, and my heartbeat. That's crazy. So it's helped me be at the best health and shape of my life. 
Um, and Jesse inspires me with yes, a lot sir. of what he's doing, so I'm going to definitely look into that. That's major, man. I'm happy for you. I, I just love anyone that's going out there things that actually makes them happy, but then also saying to other people, these are things that made me happy. Give it a shot. Maybe it'll make you happy. And not happiness in this fleeting whatever type of happiness, but bringing that true joy of like, I feel better than ever because I believe I am better than ever because I am better than ever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and getting past the surface stuff, man, it's tough. But I think with our generation, I'll be 33 in December, my Jesus year. Um, I just look at all of this and it's so many people that are mentally and emotionally unhealthy, man. Like we have been sold this bag of goods that we are our careers. We have, um, yeah, I would say my biggest failure is my daughter's mom's pregnancy. Um, I was just a terrible dude back then, man. I, I didn't help and aid in um, mental health back then and emotional health. And she's giving life to a kid and I'm just adding more stress instead of alleviating stress. So the way that I overcame that was just becoming a better person. I remember one day my daughter was, she couldn't even been two yet. And she was playing in the living room where I used to stay at this old condo. And like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. My daughter is going to marry whatever vision of manhood I present to her. And I was like, oh snap, I gotta change. I need to change. And so that started that process of like, all right, then how do I change? And getting plugged back into my spirituality for me, which is Christianity and um, even deeper than that being a follower of Christ, which is a whole thing, but yeah. So um, getting deeper into that and learning how to respect myself first before I could ever respect anybody else. And knowing that well, I'm hurting myself, you know, by doing some of the things that I value the most. And then even removing this, and I'm sure you can speak to this too, you remove this so-called like blockage, even with drinking, and then you wonder, well, why am I still feeling the same way? Because you just remove the, the fruit. Now it's time to deal with the root, and that's where the hard part starts. Like the, the surface level stuff, it's pretty easy. You can easily just turn down a drink. You can easily turn down some random partner or whatever, but it starts when you start dealing with, why do I want these things? Oh, because I'm sad. Like, all right, then what the hell am I supposed to do with that? And, you know, manhood, we're never supposed to admit our emotions. We're, which I which I do think is the dopest thing about our generation. That we are the first generation where it's like, how do you feel? Deal with that. You know what I mean? Um, versus like, because even sitting down at this age and saying like, yeah, I'm hurt because my father wasn't around when I was. And I mean, he was around, but he wasn't active in my life. That stuff is stuff that you got to deal with and you wonder how are you bringing this into adulthood because you just repeat unless you actually stop and heal from that stuff. So, yeah, man, I would say that was my biggest um, failure, but redeemed all that type of stuff. Me and my daughter's mom are great now. We are wonderful co-parents. I need to call and ask her a favor once I leave here, I just remembered. And even with my father, like we have reconciled. Um, today's his birthday, matter of fact, so I gotta call him. I called him yesterday on the wrong day. Um, Papa D. So yeah, it's just one day he just came down. He used to drive over the road trucks, and he said he had to come down for a week, and he didn't have a place to stay. Could he stay with me? And I mean, like a strange would be a light way of putting it. So I just said yeah, whatever. And it was so crazy. This man that I didn't grow up with, how much we had in common, and like we stayed up to probably about on average three or four o'clock in the morning just talking and just like man you dealt with that too and even the way that like we both took off our shoes put them together lace them back up and put them you know like together underneath the bed and just small things of like what well, most people will say like it's ain't retentive like just those things of like oh man that's like baked into my dna i thought this was just me but no like i learned this without even learning this you know what i mean like this is genetic stuff so yeah man you grow, you learn, you do better. And so that's how I overcame it. I'm with it. Yeah. Great story, great struggle. Yeah, thank you, man. So let's start talking about some places in Atlanta that you vibe with. Yeah. Where man. do you like to eat out? Where do you like to buy your groceries? I love buying my groceries at Kroger because it's super convenient. I'm on the southwest side of town. Um, but if I'm traveling a little bit, I'm a Sprouts guy, man. Oh, Sprouts just has everything. It's just not convenient. It is, but 
they have everything. And even that is like, all right, drive 15 minutes and go to the grocery store, you know? I don't know how sustainable it is. You ever go to Farmer's Market? Oh, yeah, I love the Cow's Farmer's Market. Nam Day Sue? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I have. I, I used to go to the one in Riverdale all the time because I'm really big about making my own ramen, always been. Well, and they have discount fruit and veggies. Really? Yeah. Oh, I gotta check it out. Like, you'll get a pound of strawberries for a buck. Really? Oh, I gotta go then. Because I like to freeze that. Like every other week, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, freeze that. That's my smoothie, you it's know? game changer. Oh, man, you just put me on. I'm gonna have to check that out ASAP. Those Korean markets are great. Oh, my goodness. So much food, live, smells, godly. It, it's just great. So where do you like to go out for bars? For bars. So because I don't drink, I don't go to the bars. Um, typically, I don't even get invited anymore. It's been so long that my friends don't even bother right. with it. But just for a good time, just to unwind, I'm usually typically crazy enough in Old Fort Ford. I find my, because I teach, oh, getting into my side hustles. So I teach at General Assembly as well. I teach, teach for Square Digital Marketing classes. Um, and I own a clothing line called Honor Road Clothing. Uh, we got some great stuff that I think Mr. Elena would be really proud of. I, I can't reveal it yet because it's going through trademarking, but I think it would be really dope once it comes out. Um, yeah, it's just been a, it has, 044 is like one of my favorite places to hang out because I love, my unwind is going um, shopping. So like I love going to Buffalo Exchange and I love going to Ragarama. Finding some recycled clothes. I like, like back in the day, it was thrifting and it was like, like this whole little niche audience. But now you just can say sustainable fashion because people are getting rid of clothes. Clothes put such like the carbon footprint of fashion is so terrible. It's so high. So if ninety percent of my wardrobe can come from something then that somebody already loved on, why not? And I'm still fly. So everything I'm wearing, this is Goodwill I bought today. Turn up five dollars. Turn up. See, and that's how it is. Uh, we made these shorts, and this is definitely thrifted. And okay. Yeah, so. You got yeah. some white hair? No, just a green, yellow, and orange. Okay. Yeah, sherbet and yellow, yeah. Yeah. Get you some white shorts, I'll rock the fuck out of them. Oh man, I gotta, we gotta develop some stuff, man. We need a new hat and fanny pack, too. And white. Our next collection is all black with white. Um, lettering so i can do that too yeah we may have something for you we'll see so where do you like to go for free what's some of the best free spots free spots in atlanta um man i just really love parks i know that sounds crazy but just being around people um so i'll walk the belt line as long as it's not crowded i can't do i'm not a weekend belt walker belt line walker it sucks um, Looking forward to the Southwest Beltline expansion. Oh man, it it brings its own like, and we were talking about this. Er well, um, even earlier, it brings connectivity, but it also brings gentrification. And gentrification doesn't all. It's not a four letter word. I believe there's positives of gentrification, but it's also some negatives of gentrification. And so I think the task for Atlanta, if we're going to continue to be the city that's too busy to hate, is to be a city that is slow enough to care about the people that's been here for years and not raising the taxes to places that this woman or this man or this couple have been for 30 years and now they can't afford their own home. And now they're forced to sell. They're forced to sell pennies on the dollar because a developer is going to come in and redo this. And now this block, this house that they sold for 100000 is going for 400000 i.e. 044. Legacy citizens. Oh, my goodness. We have to protect. We have to Residence. protect us. And it's crazy because California has a whole thing for that. And so, which even within that, I'm like, these golf courses need to pay. Hopefully money. city city of Atlanta gets that going a little bit better. Keisha, yeah. Keisha Lance Bottoms. Yeah, Mayor Bottoms. Uh, friend of the show, if you're listening. <laughs> um, oh, love her. Love yeah. Him. yeah, like, um, we just have to council better. members do you know? Oh, man, you are pulling my card here. If you didn't ask me, I would at least be able to name one. I am out the loop, though. Yeah, I know mine. Um, I have it. I have his information written down for my district. For um, Antonio Brown. 
Is it Brown? Because with the he, last he did the election. special election. Yeah. Yes. So he's awesome. I love him. I've, I sent him a message about a month ago. Got right back to me. Okay. Same night. We've talked a lot since then. Definitely want to have him on the podcast. Very cool. Um, Matt Westmoreland is kind of he's post to okay. see at large. Okay. He's amazing. Felicia Moore, yeah, the I'm president, familiar. is awesome. Mir Faruqi, he's great. Um, Andre Dickens, mm. he's the District 2 where we are now. Okay. Wow. District yeah. 5 for where I ran. I need it's to start Natalie showing Natalie Mosby, up. Archibong, Esquire, and she's mm. whatever. Yeah, man, that's even right now because um, I'm sure you're familiar, but we have a new Board of Education uh, superintendent coming. Um yeah, it was such a, a emphasis on these more affluent neighborhoods and establishing our charter schools. And then in my neighborhood, nothing. Like, not even, okay, you know, we're working on some, nothing. You know, and it's, it's hard and it's sad because, yeah, it's our future. Literally, we need to rely on these people to sustain us one day. And a second rate education, especially in America, makes no sense to me. Facts. Yeah. We have so many. Yeah, the resources. Atlanta public school cheating scandal is one of the worst things that's ever happened to the city systematically for us presently, our children in the future, and without our children and their education, really what are we? What are mm -hmm. we doing? Education reform, criminal justice, mass transit. That was my platform running for office. If you could change something in those categories, what would it be? First off, which of those? Yeah. Education, um, because if you're able to reach the students and get them plugged in, they will have a greater sense of responsibility for the neighborhoods. And you will also plug in the parents, which are the neighborhoods. And so these family units can actually care and sustain the neighborhoods, but they also know that the neighborhood, neighborhoods have their back. And so I will leave work early to make it to this community meeting. Why? Because I know that it actually matters. I don't feel like, you know, like my my school doesn't matter to these people. So then I'm asking, why am I even showing up? Um, criminal justice reform, always big, but I feel like it's so much bigger than Atlanta. I don't even know how we will even get started on that. Um, and mass transit sucks like that. The two complaints I have about Atlanta and one is not even a real complaint, but mass transit is absolutely one of them. Any time spent in a major city is so much more convenient, man. Like, even if you're not a bus or a train rider or whatever, man, but in New York, the fact that I can walk around almost any, a 10 minute walk I'm at, 10 to 15 minute walk, I'm at a subway that can connect me to any part of town, that's ridiculous, man. And in a city like Atlanta, um, it's not even, and for those that may not know, it's not even that it's not been voted on. The city of Atlanta has voted against it time and time again, which sucks because it's like a penny luxury tax and it's, it's, not, it's not moving anyone, but it has just been spent and, and um, turned on its head of, well, you well, know. Well, it's really the out of counties that are voting against it. Absolutely. The city of Atlanta has voted for it. Okay. But the county ad valorem tax, mm. the T-Sploss, and Gwinnett, and Clayton, and Cobb have all failed. Hmm. Time and time again, Cobb County, the Brave Stadium, has a contract set in their lease to never, for the history of the SunTrust Park, Brave Stadium, not allow MARTA to come there. Yes, so that's one of my philosophical reasons that I don't really fuck with the Braves yeah. Anymore, I still go up there and this and that, but yeah. I don't really buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't technically been inside to a game. Yeah. Some of my friends work at the Live at the Battery, so I go around there for that. But I. Oh, that's ridiculous. Right? It's systematic racism. Yeah, in we don't place want them people here. Is they don't want them here. That's what they said. And I hate it. Yeah. And I fucking hate it. Yeah, Atlanta is a beautiful city made of so many different cultures. Um, and once you get out a little bit of this oh ITP pocket. Real racism exists yeah. in Georgia, and this is such an amazing city in a great state with some of the worst people. Yeah, I tell people all day long that Atlanta is a pocket. You drive 30 miles in any direction, you'll realize how fast you're really in Georgia. Very fast, you know. Um, 
Which reminds me, that time we were driving down to Orlando and we got stopped in Lenox and I was Lenox, Georgia, and I was just like, man, you can do that because you were going off on a cop and because it was like I need to see your radar and all this type of stuff, and I'm like, I'm scared as hell. Like I am not trying to, you know what? That guy over there is fidgeting, and I'm just sitting there like, like I just saw Medusa eye to eye just to make sure that there's no excuses, you know, and but. That's the beautiful thing about Atlanta. I forgot to ask him to show me his radar. Yeah. The beautiful thing about Atlanta, though, is that you can take a kid from Gainesville and a kid from St. Louis and just have people talk. Atlanta has people talking because I can talk to somebody that was not the regular where I grew up. And so now we can talk and say we're not different at all. Like we may shoot at some different baskets, but you feel, you process, you want to do these things just like I do. All right, cool. And that's what I love about Atlanta. And I will always love Atlanta for that. The pockets that exist in Atlanta, um, unfortunately, usually come because of income. Um, but just starting to see the, even that being reduced. Um, my church is in the 04th Ward, and that's just something that's really major. The last remaining Section 8 housing is in, a, um, in inside the perimeter is in 04th Ward. And they have a now probably a 16-year lease left with the city of Atlanta and hopefully it'll get renewed and even at my church hearing people saying like why do those people have to um, stay here from both people and I'm like man I can't tell somebody that just bought a $400,000 home that this is not their neighborhood but the same way you can't tell somebody that's been here for two centuries I mean two centuries two decades that this is not their home either coexist man talk to people get to know people and get to understand why they do the things they do instead of just criticizing them for the things they do so I would even say that's part of criminal justice reform is just understanding like kids were breaking into cars by my church and they broke into my car busting my window and it was nothing in my car um, and I remember some of my church members were like I'll call the police see if they can catch them I think it is how is that helping that kid though like I much rather just find you still need to make the police report right right exactly for the statistics yeah um I'm really big on, let me just find out who this kid is, or kids, because I, I figure it's some young people. What's um, the church? Blueprint on Boulevard. Um, and I want to find out who these kids are. We'll have a conversation, and then we'll have a real conversation, because you just broke up my window, so you deserve to get slapped inside your head. But outside of that, you know, um, I'm not saying resort to violence, but sometimes violence is a, a useful tool to help people listen and to let you, to even, um, open up the door that, yo, man, I really care for you. I'm not trying to get you a record because you just broke into 10 cars. That's larceny, bro. What, well, he did? Yeah, or like they did 10 cars in a row while we were all inside. No, like, they should go to, <laughs> they should learn a lesson deeper Yeah, yeah. But see, even with that, it's like, what opportunities, like, it's just criminal justice reform. Like, where, why do they feel like they have to do this? And granted, some people are just, terrible people you know what I mean but how did this even occur how did this happen that you felt like this was your only option because underemployment or lack of for lack of employment like I just grew up in one of those neighborhoods where like that was the neighborhood hustle was robbing people and stealing and breaking into homes and so yeah like I understand I think I have compassion if you will but then I also have a realization of like some people are terrible period it goes both ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I just think painting with a broad brush can be very, very detrimental to those people that really want an option. They just don't know there's options out there for them. And some people just don't care and they want to stay exactly where they're at. Facts. How would you explain this to your daughter in 10 years? What, like this podcast or just life right now? Um, well, the dope thing is I won't have to explain this podcast. You'll or be able to listen to it. explain yourself. Yeah, that's one of my biggest, my biggest goal in life is for my daughter to fully understand me. And, I mean, that means the good and the bad. I don't want to hide anything from my daughter. So I want my daughter to be able to sit down and say that was a good guy and he had some issues. He worked through those issues. He found more issues and he tried to work through those issues. And that's just, to me, what life is. So... For my daughter to explain this point of life is start with love and end with love. All the stuff that's in the middle, 
is negotiable with love. And you don't have an option when you start and you end with love. No matter how much somebody pisses you off, love them through it. And even if that means loving them from a distance, because some people are truly detrimental to your health, like in a physical or in a mental sense, but still loving them enough to say, I, I want to give you resources, I want to help you out, and just understand that, yeah, that's that's where the greatest good happens for the greatest amount of people is love. Not, not selfishness, not uh, rolling your eyes at somebody, not saying, well, they should know better, but literally trying to understand and move closer to them. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful, bro. Yeah, and get money. Boom, boom. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, like, just don't be driven by anything but love. If mm -hmm. you're driven by love, you'll go wherever you want to go in life. Yeah, if you're driven by money, that that's a very short road, you know? Like, it's only two places you can go, and that's, like, this world's version of success. And I ain't gonna even say the world's. Uh, a very capitalistic view of success. And that's just short-sighted. I know tons of people that are successfully lost. They have a lot of money, but they, and well, what I think is a lot of money because I don't know any billionaires, but um, they have a lot of money, but they're not happy, man. Like, that sucks. Like, could you imagine that? That you could buy anything in the world, most things in the world, or you and your friends can buy anything in the world, but you don't even like yourself? That sucks. Like, I can't imagine that. No, like, and not saying that these things are in opposition, but if it came down to happy and broke or rich and ter miserable, I'm just using happy and broke all day long. All day. Yeah, because we can make things happen with being broke. Like, that's whatever. I got a hard set of skills. I can barter for the rest of my life. And I, actually, I would love to barter for the rest of my life. I would love to never exchange money. If Georgia Power needed some marketing work, I would not have to pay any bills. Yeah. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. So, what's an event you got coming up? Event coming up, I have, I'm speaking for Square, I'm teaching for Square on September 26th, Thursday, God, late. Need to finish my deck um, that I'm presenting. Um, and Where's the, that? That's at Rome at 6.30. In at Rome, Rome, Georgia? No, 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 Rome, the place, um, the co-working space on Peachtree at, by uh, Terminus. Um, Is it open to the public? Yeah, come through. I, you got an RSVP, but... Do um, square night classes. That's the whole. It's like four different classes that they're putting on. For, uh, it's either free or very low cost now for people. So come through. Um, and then November seventh, we're having what we call closed minded for my clothing brand, Honor Roll Clothing. We do these um, two interview style, um, yeah, talks with people and just have them tell us about how their journey as a fashionable professional started, sustained, where they're looking to go. So we talk to two people in the city and try to make that happen. Um, with that being said too, we're running low on like, not running low at all actually. Thank God that we have some, so many dope people in the city. But we need some big names, so I'm trying to get the break, um, break Sarah, I'm trying to get the Mash Burns. Um, it's just not easy. <laughs> Yeah, I get a, yeah, yeah, hit us up, and Sid Mashburn never responds, so, yeah. If it was easy, everybody right. would do it. Absolutely. So, I have no quorum with, no, no issue with just showing up and just like, hey, is Sid here? Okay, I'll be back. There you go. Yeah, that, that Sometimes is Sometimes that's all you have to do and all you can do yeah. to get an opportunity is just show the fuck up. Yeah, and in person, just go. Yeah, and be your best than, self and that's give your best self. More than most people would do. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't be behind a keyboard <laughs> anymore. You just can't. Yeah. I mean, you can. Yeah. But I feel like, but that's the factor that's going to separate the greats of this generation. There's so many people that don't know how to speak. There's so many people that don't know how to maintain a relationship with people. Um, talk to people. You need help. Ask them. But we're so self-conscious that it's just frightening, you know, to people to just ask a question mm -hmm. like, hey, I need help. How do you do this? And people are willing to share. Some people are dicks, but, you know, like those are few. In my life, I have found that those people are few and far between. You just kind of let that roll off of you anyway. When you meet somebody and they're a jerk, you just say like, oh, that wasn't pleasant. And then the person- I wonder how they're feeling about themselves. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Maybe it was a hard day. I'm gonna give you benefit of the doubt, you know? And then, but you move on. And you find somebody that would love to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So great piggyback. Who, 
are a couple people that you would recommend for me ha- to have on the podcast next? Oh my goodness, it's a couple people. Um, a, I think that you like high level without even getting into names. I think having people that represent almost every sector of Atlanta innovation. So not only just tech, but fashion, because we got some dope brands that's trying to emerge here. Um, I see the Just Guys stuff, so talking to the guys from Goddess Dope would be very, very cool. Sherrod Simpson's my great Oh, well, then, there you go. For sure. Yeah. He's um, busy, but yeah. yeah. Very busy. Um, I would say even talking to people that own the spots that we love to kick it at. I think Carl Injects that owns Soundtable is one of the dopest people in the city. He's a gym that most people don't even realize that is literally lives here. Um, so I forgot about Soundtable. I love Soundtable. Uh, Carl is such a music purist. I just love it. Hip hop head. Um, one of the dopest people in the city. One of the people that I love to just chat with is. Um, do you remember Studio Number? No- well, it still exists, but Studio Number no. Seven. Have you ever been there before? It's on Marietta and Ivan Allen. And um, the woman that used to own Studio Number no. Seven, Shannon Evans. She's not there anymore. But when I tell you um, her insight is so beautiful. Like, the way she sees the world is just, you just sit there and it's just like, I just want to be a friend. You know, like, just some people are like that to where they just have, they're just dope people. I feel the same about you. Oh, man, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I would be interested in hearing you interview Michael Shore. That would be our old boss. That would be very, very interesting. Actually, Michael has a very dynamic story. He's a deep, <laughs> interesting, and incredible story. Yeah. And Susan both, for sure. Absolutely. And just in that that process of listening and interviewing him as if you didn't know him. You know what I mean? Like, Michael's a very interesting person. Um, for the good and for the bad sometimes, but a very interesting person that I love to death. And so I would love to hear what that looks like, you know? Okay. All um, right. I'm sorry, that. I'll hit them up. Yeah, even some of these co-working spaces, man. I would love to hear the story of how local co-working spaces are battling, like, the WeWorks mm-hmm. that are eventually going to go out of business because I don't see how they're going to sustain this model. And I work at a WeWork. Do you hear about what happened financially with them recently? Well, you know the CEO stepped down today. Today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've just been listening to The Economist the past two weeks. Oh, my goodness. With the, Oh, yeah, we're a tech company. And it's like, no, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> and they uh, lost IPO. a lot of money the last week. Yeah, that IPO is trash. <laughs> so I think some of the shared working spaces will sustain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, WeWork being the first out the jump mm. might be the pilgrim with the arrows in the back so we'll mm-hmm. we'll see we'll see yeah know. so the trailblazer always it'd be interesting to see how the managers property managers of those we works are incorporated and want to be incorporated in atlanta mm-hmm. for sure yeah i think right now they have because again my office is in a we work um which one uh 1372 peace tree yep uh, so peace tree and 17th street um, hard of midtown. I was in fourteen forty seven with Michael and Susan. Yeah, the industrious. industrious. Yeah, I just think that that is going to be the win. Like there is Pittsburgh Yards is coming on. Um, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I literally have a hard hat tour on Thursday for it. <laughs> Hell yeah! Um, another hustle coffee. Um, that's the whole thing within itself. We'll keep that under wraps. Okay, right now. sure. Um, but yeah, with. That you have, uh, what's it called? I just got put on today, but for my e-commerce friends, they have a, um, ah, is it, it's still up in box, sweat box, I can't remember the name of it, but um, literally it's for, it's a co-working space for um, e-commerce businesses. They literally have shared um, warehouse space as well as shared co-working space. So like you need somewhere to store your inventory, this is a great place to do, and you have offices too. Um, so you don't have to do drop shipping and all that type of stuff like a lot of people have to do or do third party logistics. Um, yeah, I would just, I think it's really interesting to know how these places that are not based here or their headquarters are not here, how they plan on integrating into the city. Um, just coming to Atlanta and saying we're going to take over is just for the birds. I, don't, I feel like that only lasts and for the, such a long time. And the scooters. Oh, for the scooters, godly. Yeah, no scooters after 9 p.m. 
and stay off the sidewalks. Please, people, stay off the sidewalks. But be safe. Because, God, like, like, you can tell the people that have never ridden a bike in traffic before. Yeah. Like, even people when they're on the sidewalk with a bike, I'm like, man, that's such a dick move. You know, <laughs> like, is is Yeah, I mean, I'm all for the extended commute assistance. Mm -hmm. The first and last mile being 80% of all rides in Atlanta mm -hmm. or within two miles. So I'm all for that. Um, did we get shit on by Bird and Lime and mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft and all these scooter companies? Yeah, like they put out way more yeah. than, than they did in other cities and they don't really regulate it. And they, I think they kind of um, cr criminally price what's uh, predatorily price. Mm. Um, and I don't like the preload car, so there's some philosophical differences I have with them. That's true. Um, but all in all, I think it's a hindrance. But no, it's dangerous as fuck. I did a bicycle ride from San Francisco to Washington D.C. for kids with disabilities. And it was safer twice doing that. In 4,200 miles across America, the first four back in Atlanta had the worst wreck of my life. Jeez. On 17th Street in spring, going down that hill. Oh, the danger. 14th yeah. to 17th. Yeah. And there was just this guy jaywalking. And I was going about 35 miles an hour. I didn't fucking clip this guy's foot or hand. It was direct yeah. body to bike contact. I flipped my handlebars, shattered my helmet, and iPhone generation one on my back. And this was after riding all of America, the most dangerous and treacherous conditions happened in my own city. That makes sense. So that's... That's how I tell people uh, about, uh, what is that? The Monroe Piedmont Park Hill? Like, please be careful because people do not know what to do when, because coming down that hill, you are flying. Flying. Oh my goodness. Like you said, about 30 to 35, like, and yeah, you're just flying and coasting at 30 miles per hour. And people just cross the street, just stand there and look crazy. Like in New York, that would literally cause a full on fist fight, period. Or death. Or death, yeah. Because like, yeah, these messengers in New York, because everybody knows when to walk, when to stay still, and all this type of stuff. Yeah, you're crossing the intersection because you don't see a car, but you haven't checked for a bike. Be careful. Thanks. Please be careful because mm -hmm. this is a person that's unprotected except for a helmet, and most riders I know don't keep on all the body gear and all that because it's too heavy and it's too it's high. too much, yeah, it's hot, it's human. It's a lot to carry, baggage. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you want everything light. I don't think people realize that, like, People spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on their bike to be able to pick it up with two fingers because the lighter the bike, the less energy you have to exert. Mm -hmm. And like my my house to the office is 12 miles. I, I probably would never bike that just because I know where I have to go through and I'm just like, hell no. Right. So many hills, so many places that don't have um, bike lanes. And unfortunately people here in Atlanta don't know how to ride with people that um, there's no bike lane. It's dangerous. Even with bike lanes, they're in the bike lane and it's like, bruh, move on. Yeah, so transit, transit's a real issue for sure. Um, but yeah, man, I feel like this is a pretty good place to wrap it up. Absolutely. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram. That would probably be the best. Uh, it is Chris Tan, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-N, period, Duncan, D-U-N-C-A-N. Chris Tan Duncan. Um, Chris and Tan. Chris like a somebody's name and Tan like the color. Not Christian. You you won't find me that way. So yeah, man. What's that mean, Chris Tan? I don't know. My mom was on the epidural. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you spell your name? Yeah, that's literally oh, my name is pronounced okay. Chris Tan. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. that's literally what my mom named me. She her thing was always that she um, wanted me to be able to get a job, but it to be unique. So on it reads as Christian when people don't pay attention. But then when they look second, like on the second look, they're like, oh, there is no extra I there. Yeah, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-N, Chris Tan Lewis Duncan. There we go. Yeah. That. Yeah, man. Now you know more about me. Hell yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely sure do man. after this. Yeah, man. Well, we'll have to have it on again soon. Hey, man, Thank I appreciate so that. It's like when you go on the first date. If you can set the second date on the first date, you did something right. There we go. <laughs>
what is my true fitness goal here? I do want to be happy. I want to be healthy, but also I don't want to do it for anyone else except for myself. So if I'm going after that and doing it for someone else, then they hold my affirmation, my or actually they hold validation for myself in their hands. And nobody deserves that key. No one. Validation only can come through me for me. And for each individual is only we can only be validated by ourselves or a higher being if we choose to believe so. 